Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, chemical bonds. Okay. Uh, before we talk about chemical reactions, we're going to talk about chemical bonds. I know we've talked about elements and compounds and mixtures and the differences between the two, and then um, we just finished one uh, a video on solutions. Uh, but now we're going to look at bonds so we can understand chemical reactions better. Before we go into bonds, I want to review the atomic structure, okay? What an atom looks like. Remember, we have the nucleus in the middle. And in the nucleus, we have protons and neutrons, okay? Both of these exist in the nucleus. Outside of the atom, on the out, outermost edge of the atom, we have electrons. Okay, and um, if we remember correctly, protons have a positive charge, electrons have a negative charge, and neutrons have no charge. Okay, electrons exist in certain areas of the atom. And we call these areas levels or shells. Okay, so in this picture they're represented by a ring. Although electrons don't orbit the nucleus, they sort of vibrate in certain areas. And here, um, but it's just easier for us to conceptualize or to picture what these levels look like if we do it as rings. Um, so, a chemical bond. A chemical bond is a force of attraction okay, that holds two atoms together. So it's something that, that creates a force of attraction that brings two atoms together. They can be atoms of the same element or they can be different elements but it brings both of those together. Um, so here we have oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. Okay. The bond, the chemical bond, is the interaction or the force of attraction between those two atoms. It's what makes these atoms stick together. And if we remember, this molecule is our water molecule. We have two hydrogens and one oxygen. So our chemical formula is H2O. Again, talking about chemical bonds, an important thing, or, or um, one of the most important factors of how atoms bond um, is a concept called valence electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons on the outermost energy level. Okay the electrons on the outermost energy level. So here we have three atoms, three different elements. We have boron, nitrogen, and helium. Valence electrons are the electrons on the outermost energy level. So I want you guys to try to uh, figure out with me how many valence electrons are in each of these atoms. So boron, we have five total electrons. Okay, One, two, three, four, five. I want you to figure out how many electrons are on the outermost energy level. Hopefully, you should have said three. Okay, boron has three valence electrons. Let's go to nitrogen.
Hold on. Uh, well, I think I drew nitrogen wrong, so we're gonna uh, hold, uh, hold off on nitrogen and let's just go to helium. Okay, helium. How many electrons are in the outermost energy level? This one's pretty easy since helium only has one energy level. Okay. Hopefully, you should have said two. Okay, and sorry about that mix-up. I'll be better next time, but uh, now we're more careful. But uh, I don't want to show you anything wrong, so we're going to skip over that nitrogen since I drew it up there wrong. The octet rule. Okay, the octet rule is that atoms will combine uh, to form compounds in order to reach eight electrons on their outermost energy level. So we have we have an atom here and an atom here. Okay, and these two want to bond together to make sure that they have eight electrons on their outermost energy level. So. Um, We have these electrons running around, or moving around the atom. They're going to either exchange, or gain or lose electrons, or they're going to share electrons so they have eight on the outermost energy level. Eight is the magic number, okay? Because we want to make sure that we have eight electrons on that outermost energy level. So if we take salt, which is sodium and chlorine. If we take salt, salt has one electron on the outermost energy level, and chlorine has seven electrons on the outermost energy level. For these two to combine, we're going to take this electron away from sodium and bring it over to chlorine. So chlorine now has eight electrons, and sodium has eight electrons on the outermost energy level. And now sodium, since it lost that electron, loses that energy level completely, and it has now a full um, energy level as well. So now these two atoms are happy. They, they're not happy, but they're, they're at a state that they're comfortable that they, they want to be in, because they want to reach eight electrons on their outermost energy level. And we're going to talk about two types of bond, and we'll cover more, more of these in depth in class with the activities, different group activities that we're going to do, be doing, but the types of bonds. We have ionic and covalent. Ionic bonds, um, just like I showed you, showed you earlier with the sodium and chlorine, atoms gain or lose electrons. Okay, these happen mostly between metal and non-metals. Okay, remember those types of elements. We had metals, metalloids, and non-metals. Ionic bonds happen most often between metal and non-metals. Covalent bonds, is atoms share electrons. Okay, one doesn't uh, give up an electron and, or, and then take it away from another, but they the two atoms share that electron, so both of them have um, eight electrons in their outermost energy level. This type of bond, covalent bond, happens mostly with nonmetals. Okay, when two nonmetals bond, most often it's covalent. When a metal and non-metal bonds, most often it's ionic. So these two types of bonds we're going to be looking at more closely in class. Once we take a look at these bonds, we're going to go into what a chemical reaction is. And just to give you a sort of um, an idea of where we're going, uh, chemical reactions are changing the bonds and changing the way the elements are, are uh, formed together. Uh, we may start off with we may start off with uh, sugar and oxygen, but a chemical reaction may occur where we get um, uh, carbon dioxide and water okay, to 
to to we start with one product or we start with one two one or two reactants and we may get one or two new products it's um, it's we'll, we'll go into it more in class but I just want to show you where we're going um, but make sure that you complete your whisk you may need to rewatch um, pause rewind and replay the video a few times in order to get all your notes but remember you need to watch and write which you should be doing now uh, after the video you should be summarizing and then think of a question that you want to ask in class. Okay, I'll be checking these whisks uh, uh, on the next due date, um, but I'll see you guys in class.